Yes, people, what's happening? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video. First things first, guys, make sure you smash the like, subscribe if you're new around here, and as always, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And a little bit of change of pace in today's video. It's the Euro 2024 preview. Another major tournament is back upon us again. Only a three-year gap this time, so it's come around a little bit sooner uh, than it normally would. And England, as we always say, they do have a decent chance this time. The squad's good. Southgate's actually picked a squad on form as well. The players are decent. We've now just got to try and put it together, which has always been the big problem for England. But to discuss England, other tournament hopefuls, um, dark horses and all that sort of stuff and what England's genuine chances are, I'd like to be joined by Villa fan Luke from the Up The Villa podcast. Mate, welcome back. Good to catch up again. Nice little change of pace here. Um, first of all, mate, what, what, what are your thoughts surrounding international football? Do you like it? Do you look forward to major tournaments? Oh, I love the tournaments. Like, absolutely love it. You sort of stick the TV on at five o'clock. You've got a game on. For that one for ET. Put the next one on. Job done. So, I, I love that aspect of it. But, um, yeah, I hate sort of like the international breaks during the league. I, I can't be doing with them. I can't be doing with watching England against, like, Malta and San Marino. Like, what is the point in that? But, you know, these major tournaments, I absolutely love it. Yeah, no, to be fair, one thing I will give Gareth Southgate credit for is I think he has created a culture within the camp and, you know, he's got the country back behind England again, actually looking forward to, to major tournaments and looking forward to the national side playing, which has not always been the case. Um, obviously, the boys are in Germany now. The tournament kicks off this week and we've got our first game against Serbia. Before we dive into our chances, expectations and whatnot, what were your thoughts on the final score? Because something that's been levelled at Southgate a lot is not picking players that are in form that deserve to go. And do you know what? Bar one or two choices, for me, I actually can't complain about the squad because he's gone with players in form. You know, he's taken risks. He's dropped established names like Grealish, Rashford, uh, etc. James Madison. Um, he's gone for players in form. Your Palmers, your 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 Whartons, your Maynus, your your Anthony Gordons, and whatnot. Um, what what have you made of the squad? Yeah, I like it. I like that he's sort of gone back to what he said he was going to do when he first came in, sort of like pick players on form and and etc. So I, I love that aspect of it. I'm a little bit concerned that of it. You mentioned it sort of like in the intro about it all coming together, and I think that's the biggest question mark I've got. I think, you know, as two fans of like two teams that are in the Premier League, we, we watch a lot of these great players like Palmer, Eze, Foden, you know, all these really good players. But can we now combine it in a tournament and, and it come together? And I, I, I just, I'm just not sure whether that chemistry is there. You know, like what, what is the team going to be? I think that's, that's the difficult part. Um, and sort of like it all coming together because I watched the game against Iceland and I thought, do you know what? We strongest team, yeah, strongest team we could have probably played. I think you know a lot of the, apart from Bellingham that didn't play, that was probably our strongest team, and it didn't really click, did it? So that's my only thing. I, I like the team, but can it click and can it work? I mean, what what do you think? So, mate, I think the squad's really exciting. We have absolutely got the talent and the players to do it. But I think too many people like over overrate England's chances and how good they are just based on the names rather than the reality of how good these guys gel together as a team. I think, look, we made the final last time out. We should, we should have won the Euros last time out. You look at the team then compared to now. Of course, the team is arguably better, right? There are better players in the squad now than there were back then. You know, back then, you know, your Sancho's, your Mounts, your Sterling's and whatnot were in the team. Like the squad's changed quite a bit, and you'd argue they're probably better options now and a better team. My major issue, right, is that international football, obviously, as we know, is totally different. At major tournaments, you need experience. And we've got a lot of guys in the squad now who are excellent players, right? but I've got very little international experience. Mainu until six months ago, didn't even have an international cap. Wharton literally made his debut for, for, for England uh, on uh, last Monday against uh, against Bosnia. Anthony Gordon, very inexperienced at international over, as is Cole Palmer. So that those would be my concerns there. Defensively, there are issues because Luke Shaw's not played football since February. He's not going to start the first game. Even, if he's, even as expected, he's maybe fit to play some part in the Denmark game. The guy's not played for four, for three or four months. You know, how are you just going to chuck him straight back in? Um, I thought the Branthwaite uh, exclusion from the squad was, was baffling for me. That, that, that for me was the, the big thing that he got wrong um, because you're now one John Stones injury away 
from having a massive, massive problem in defence. Um, so look, my my main issues would be a lack of experience in the squad now. Talented players, but in tournaments, you need that know-how, you need that experience. You look at teams that win, right? They've got that combination of good young players with winning, with winning experience and know-how in international football. Another concern for me would be, you know, majorly talented players, but how many winners have we actually got in the team? Because you look at Gareth Southgate, right? For all the good work that he's done, he doesn't know how to win. He's never won anything before. You've got Carl Walker, who's a winner. You've got Jude Bellingham, who's won stuff. You've got Phil Foden, who who's also a winner. Um, and that that's kind of it. I mean, I'm maybe missing one or two. Harry Kane, for as good as he is, and never won anything. So how many of these guys actually know what it takes to get over the line? So that, for me would be a concern. I think, look, we, we could definitely say we're in, a, we're in a good position in terms of a squad, the players we've got. But in terms of have we got the, the winning mentality, have we got a manager that when it really matters can demonstrate that he's got that in-game now to switch things and, and not get outsmarted by his opposite number? I, I, I personally don't quite see that. I mean, what, what are your thoughts on sort of a lack of winning mentality within the squad? Maybe a lack of experience despite how good the players are. Do you think that's something that could, could really harm us, particularly in those latter stages? Yeah, I think I do think we are overhyped. I I, th I think we're we're overhyped as a team. I think the big thing for me, which I, I really struggle with with England, is is that we don't ever play any continuity between matches. We don't play the same team, and I think I really think that this is a big problem. I go back to when like Spain were winning like the Euros, the World Cup. They were they were absolutely smashing. You knew you what that team was 11, gonna, yeah. you knew what that team was going to be. But we again are going into a major tournament, and we still don't know what the team is. You know, is it going to be Saka or Bowen on on the on the right? We don't know. Is it going to be Foden on the left? Is Foden going to play in the middle? Is it going to be Bellingham and Maynou? Is Foden going to go in the middle? So we've got all these question marks of, of, of what the actual team's going to be. And I just think, how can you go into a tournament and, and not have that sort of like continuous team building up to a tournament? And that's where I think we're going to have big problems. And I do think that as, as much as it's great to see, say, like Palmer for England, Watkins for England, Bowen for England. I, I always get the sense of they're trying to just impress for themselves. They're trying to they're trying to earn that shirt, aren't they? And I never feel like that's a, that's a good position to be in either because you know it. We we need to be playing as a team, and I don't think we're playing as a team. I think it's it's all about individual players. Sort of like trying to impress. I, I was listening to Gordon after after one of the games the other day, and he was like just talking about his personal performance and and stuff. And I just thought, oh, I don't know, I don't know. I, I just don't know, mate. I just think I want to see us have a team that we can just put out sort of all the time, and and then that team can keep growing. I just think all this like swapping and changing, and like you know, I, I think Wharton's going to be a good player. But like, he can't start in the Euros, can he? Like, no. what have we, what have we seen from him to suggest that he's going to be the saviour in the Euros? I'm not sure, mate. I just think it's just a bit all over the show, really. No, I, I, I would agree, mate. I think like there's just what you say about not knowing the team is spot on because if you ask like 50, 50 to one hundred England fans, right? what they think England's best team is, you'd get so many different answers. Is it Trent alongside Rice? Is it Maynou? Is it Wharton? Is it Bellingham playing deep so Foden can play as a 10? Should, should you have Gordon on the left so you've got natural width? Or can you have Foden there so he drifts in where he's more comfortable? Like, there's so many questions what we don't know the answers to. And that can't be helpful heading into a major tournament. I feel like this more than, say, the World Cup or the previous Euros... We we feel it feels to me like England are are underprepared going into this tournament. Now that might not be the case, but from the outside looking in, it feels like we're slightly underprepared for this. We don't know what the best team is. The preparation's not been the best. Two poor results in the March international break against Brazil and Belgium. Uh, obviously, Bosnia were crap. We then had a shocking performance against uh, against Iceland. So you feel like we're a little bit underprepared. Ultimately, like tournament football is different, and when you know you get to it, you know, and the business starts to kick in, you know, you do tend to see players step up and deliver. Um, I just, I agree with you. I just think there's too many unknowns surrounding England at the moment. Um, you know, Gareth Southgate, does he know what his best team is? 
he'll probably say he does, but the reality I think would show otherwise. Um, does I, I always look at him and think when it really comes to it in big moments, in big matches, right, in big knockout games, has he demonstrated to me that he's got what it takes to outsmart the opposition, be one step ahead, one step ahead, you know, I can see the ties turning and I'm going to make a change, switch things up, put an extra attacker on, tighten things up in midfield. He hasn't once demonstrated since he's been England manager that in the big moments, he's got what it takes to change a game and win a match. He hasn't shown it. He hasn't shown us once. We fell short against France. We fell short in the final against Italy. However good this England team is, whatever good players we've got, there is no evidence to suggest that this tournament's going to be any different and we're going to be able to take that final step because in reality, nothing has really changed. Yeah, we've got some better, maybe we've got some better players, but in terms of what England have done in tournaments and, you know, can these players show that this time is going to be different? I I, I don't believe that. I don't believe it, it, it's there for me. I mean, look, let's, let's talk about Phil Foden, for example, mate. You know, the best player in the Premier League last season. I think we can we can both agree on that. You know, he's not he's not done anything in an England shirt so far. And that's not a criticism on him. It's just not happened for him. But he has to play centrally because on the left-hand side, he is completely wasted. But then playing Foden centrally means that you've got to play Bellingham a little bit deeper. But my, my argument would be that Bellingham playing deeper, he's better playing alongside Rice than Foden would be out on the left. Would, would, you, would you agree on that? Do you think whatever happens with this setup, you cannot have Phil Foden playing left wing? Yeah, 100%. For me, Foden has to play down the middle. I mean, if you even look at him playing for Man City, he's drifting off that right. You know, he's on that right coming, coming playing more central air. Their system works and then their right back goes forward or vice versa. So, honestly, on the left, it's like such a weird position and it's so unbalanced as well because Foden on the left, you've got no pace on the left. There's no, know, width, if, no natural width yeah, if, if, if if you're going to be starting with, it looks like Trippier is going to be starting as well. He, you know, he, he's not really going to be bombing up and down, is he? Because he ain't really got the legs to do that, really. So I think that's a, a massive problem. Um, but I, I do think he's going to start there. I honestly I, I, think I, I, he's... I've got no, no, no illusions at all that he's going to start there. He's 100% going to start on the left. I can guarantee it now. And you'll have Bellingham playing as a 10. And you'll have, and you'll probably have. To be honest, I think you'll have Trent in, in alongside Rice. Yeah, I think I think it'll be Trent or Mainu. I, I just think he, uh, I just think he he really likes Mainu. I, I think yeah, he's, he's, done he's, well. he's 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 played. Yeah, he he has played too, well, but like, it's too soon for him, in my opinion. Like, it's way yeah. too soon. It's like what we said at, at the start as well, though. That I think because that defense is looking a bit shaky, I think he's going to overcompensate that and. And he's going to sort of try and be as so- solid a- as he can, really. But I-, I-, I don't think we've got the easiest of groups either. I, th- I think we've got a very, very difficult group. And I think it's tough you know, team, you know, they've got Sesko up top. They've got Vlajevic up top. They've got, you know, they've got different Boy, teams. They've got yeah. different players. And, and I just think the-, the blueprint has already been set now on-, on how you can stifle this England team from our last two games. and We can't and- break teams down. No, so and that's why I think the team because the team is a little bit disjointed with sort of like what we're doing with certain players, it, it's not got that sort of freedom and that and that flexibility. I mean, you know, our, our sport Villa, you support Chelsea. We both know our teams inside out. So going into any given game in the Premier League, I'll back at my team to to give any team a really good game because one, I know how they play, two, I know that the quality that we've got. But when I go into England and I, and I look at how England are going to play, I haven't got a clue what they're doing. I, honestly, I have not got any idea what they are trying to do. And that might sound really negative, but I, I, I just don't understand what we're doing. No, no. And, and that's where I'm at. And, and as, a, as an England fan going into like a major tournament, you know, we should be we should be absolutely buzzing. But I'm more buzzing that it's the Euros. I'm not buzzing because like <laughs> England are playing. I'm buzzing to watch all the other teams, really. So I think, like you're saying, and, until until I see something and, and, and I see a spark and I see us playing well, then I'll start to get excited. And But then, you know, in the back of your mind, you know, we, we look at it as an England point of view and we think, well, as soon as we play anybody half decent, we're not going to win. 
because like, oh, the blue like what you said. But we we did our we did our predictions and uh, we predicted like the whole tournament and and as it went for us, if we get to the semis, we play France, and we were just like, well, we're not we're not going to win then because what what have what has any England fan seen? To suggest we can beat France, there isn't anything. This, this, this is this is my point. When I speak to England fans who I think are overly positive, and look, I don't want to be negative the whole time, but I think you've got to be realistic. What what are people basing England winning this tournament on, other than the the names that are in the squad? Because over the last three tournaments under Southgate, right, we have de- what what have we demonstrated to, to, to suggest, right, that when it really matters, we deliver. And when we face a decent team, we actually beat them. Because nine times out of ten, the first decent team we play at a tournament, we lose. Happened in the World Cup in Qatar. First decent team we played was France. We lost. Happened at the Euros last last time out, you know. The first decent-ish team we played in Italy, we we, we lost. I know it was on penalties, but we didn't have a shot on target from the second minute of the game until the until 120 minutes afterwards. So, like, there's no evidence to suggest, right, that we've got what it takes to win a tournament. So what are people basing it on other than just purely names on a piece of paper and how well they play for their clubs? You know, it's not about the names. It's not about how well you play for your club. International football is totally different. And right now, to as it as should be expected, you know, there's a lot of new names in this squad. The team chemistry is not there. This very much feels like the last tournament of the sort of the, the, the squad from the previous two. And it feels like we're at a crossover point now where the last where the last sort of semblances of the squad from the previous two tournaments are kind of being phased out and now a new cycle coming forward for say the 26 World Cup and the 28 Euro. So we feel like we're on that cutoff point where the previous squad is not quite been phased out, but there's a lot of new youngsters coming in. So you almost feel like for me, this England squad right now probably isn't going to be at its best until maybe the 26 World Cup or the 28 Euros. I think with the group we had, I think we've missed our opportunity, which was the World Cup and and obviously the, the, the previous Euros. But in terms of expectations, mate, what, what, what would you view as a successful tournament? Only one team can win it. As far as I'm concerned, I think if we if we didn't make the semi-finals, that would have to be considered a failure. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think this this it's always really weird, isn't it, when you when you think about England and, and you think of what is success. Success for England should be winning it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Just because we've had we've had we haven't won anything since '66, right? Which is a very, very long time. But we've had these little spells where we've done well, and that's seen as like success. Do you know what I mean? Like Getting to a final and losing has been sort of like, oh, that's the the best we've seen and and etc. But I, I, I go by and think you should, in fact, you shouldn't like be happy that you failed. Basically, you know, you support Chelsea, you've seen your team win loads of stuff, and so you're used to like winning stuff. Do you know what I mean? So I think England, England should go into every tournament expecting to win it. And nothing more. Like, I, I can't say getting to a semi-final is going to be success because why should it be? Because we've ultimately lost. Like, and this this manager has, has had, has he been in about eight years now? Mate, it's his fourth tournament, isn't it? So, so this guy now, Southgate, should, should be having these tournaments locked in. He should have so much experience how to manage a group game, how to manage teams with a low block, how to manage knockout games, how to approach the big games, because he should have learned. He should have learned from all his little mistakes now, sort of like in semi-final, in the final, and be able to adapt to the given scenario. So for me, we, 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 have, to, we have to try and win it. Otherwise, it's failure, really. Yeah. No, I, I would agree. I think there's a a, a a big worry that England are becoming a nearly, not, not even becoming, England are just a nearly team. You know, I feel like we're almost sort of becoming the spurs of international football, as in like you almost get there, people sort of appreciate how you play, but you're not really a threat because you're not going to win anything. You know, I think there's a danger that England are developing that nearly tag. And there's no reason why we can't win tournaments. We've got the players you know, we've got the quality to do it. And it, this might sound harsh, but I honestly think the, the biggest thing holding us back is the manager. And I know he's done a great job and, you know, England have done better in the last few tournaments than they've done in the longest time possible. But 
But as I mentioned before, mate, the reality is I honestly think Gareth Southgate's holding this team back because he hasn't got the tactical acumen and the in-game IQ to, to, to change things and, and to make things happen and, and to win games when you need to. You know, he was outwitted against France. He was outwitted by Mancini in that Euros final. Croatia in the in the 2018 World Cup, you know, out like, like didn't have what it took. So Mate, I, I, I know that sounds harsh, but I think he's the main. I think he's the, the the main thing that is holding England back from winning this tournament. I mean, what are your views on Southgate? Uh, I mean, I think what what he's done with the sort of the setup and, yeah. and he's brought it all together, and he's he's sort of got you know when you hear the stories of like Gerard and Lampard and like the, some some players would have talked to each other, and there was like these over here, and you know he, he's done well to like eradicate that but I, I'm with you like you know I, I see our manager that, that Villa have got Unai Emery and, and, and I see how sort of like tactically switched on he is just his vision and his philosophy and on how he wants us to play and how demanding he is and I, I, I just don't see that with Southgate I, 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 what I see with Southgate is he sort of just mirrors what sort of you know, a couple of friendlies ago, he was playing concert at right back. Now, if Unai Emery wasn't playing concert at right back, he would not be putting a player that's a centre half and moving them across and sort of playing them at, them at right back. So, you know, I just think he needs to be a bit more like forward thinking with with like the shape of his team as well. It's it's very generic four three three, isn't it? And and you know, the, these generic systems and shapes. They're a thing of the past now. You know, Pep's creating, like, defenders going into central midfield or, you know, Emery's got his sort of left-back that's become a winger. So we've got all these different variations and we're just very much like round peg, round hole. That's how you play. 4 three, three, that's it. And I'm like, is that it? <laughs> like, is, is, that, nice. is, is that how we play? Mate, I think that I think it's just an English coaches thing. I'm not saying that English coaches are bad, by the way, but I just think they're a step behind in terms of the, the coaches that get produced in Europe and on the continent. You know, they don't seem to have that same tactical now, that tactical ability, that same reading of the game or what different ways of interpreting the game. You know, it very much seems to be a set way and very little willingness to adapt or just not having the ability to do that. So like I know it seems harsh. I absolutely agree with what you said of Southgate in terms of the the, the like the work that he's done around the setup and how he's re-energized uh, people's engagement with the national team. But when it comes to the football, with the players that England have got, not only do we play a poor brand of football, not only do we not really know what we're going to do, we also um, also don't have a manager that's capable of making game-winning decisions. So when you put all those things together, as good as the players might be, as much quality as we might have those things are not going to win you a tournament. And you need, you need a little bit of luck along the way of the tournament as well. But the fun, for me, the fundamental ingredients aren't quite there. It's not, it's not enough just having the players. You know, we haven't got enough from the manager. You know, you look at the managers that are in situ at, at, at the various countries, not, like Nagelsmann at Germany, Martinez at Portugal, Didier Deschamps at France, for example, three teams that are going to be there or thereabouts. No, they're all better managers than Southgate. You know, would you say they've got better squad, better players than England? On the whole, probably not. Um, but they've got guys that know how to win. And more and most importantly, they've got a manager that knows what it takes to win. And unfortunately, mate, Southgate doesn't know how to win. He doesn't know what winning is. He's never won anything, you know. And he doesn't have doesn't quite seem to have it in him to take that final step to turn England from a nearly side into a winning side. And having the quality is not enough to do that. You need that inspiration and that know-how from the sidelines. And we just don't seem to quite have it. But, mate, in terms of just like other other teams in the tournament, who else do you look at as kind of contenders here? France are the obvious ones with your Mbappes. I think Germany under Nagelsmann, home tournament, since he's come in, you know, maybe, I know they've had a couple of shocking tournaments uh, recently, but I mean, I'm not saying they're going to win it or anything, but they have to be considered up there with a chance now, given how he's turned things around with the likes of Florian Wurtz, Musiala, et cetera, in there. Portugal have got so much ability. Um, even Spain, to a degree, could be could be dark horses. I mean, who, who do you look at as, as as the contenders for this for this Euros? So I'd say my four teams to get to a semi-final, I think, would be England, France, 
And I think it's going to be Germany, Portugal. I think those are the four teams that I've sort of thinking can go quite far. You can never write off the Germans, can you? And the fact that it's it's in their country, it, it, you know, that adds a different dimension altogether, doesn't it? And and I think they're quite like you're saying, like Verts, Musiala. I think Havertz, he's you know he's he's played well this season. He'll lead the line pretty well as well. Uh, so I think that'll be good. I think Netherlands might have some bright moments and then sort of like just fade off. Uh, one team that I do think might, I don't know, just a weird show. I think Scotland might do something, you know. Not saying like go all the way, but I think... Get out of the group. Yeah, I think so. I think because their qualifying campaign was was unbelievable, but they've dropped off with um, the friendlies. But I think they're like quite a solid team. And and I, and I think I, I could see them sort of. That would be my one shout to sort of as a bit of a wild card to like maybe get like round the sixteen, edge the quarters, maybe. Um, who who do you think's like a wild card? Oh, May I? I don't think you can ever rule out Croatia. It, it doesn't matter what players they seem to have. When it comes to tournaments, <laughs> they always seem to do something. Um, that I think they they they've got a chance of of, of progressing to the latter stages. I mean, people always talk about Turkey. I mean, it didn't happen for them at the World Cup, but they've got some talented players in that squad. You know, I, I'm not saying that they're going to make the semi-finals or anything like that, but I think they could maybe spring a surprise or two. So th- those Croatia and Turkey are probably be my main ones. But again, mate, Portugal have absolutely got the talent to win this tournament. Yeah. They have got yeah. so much ability in that team. It's actually scary, but a little bit like maybe with with England as well to a degree is it's more a lot of individuals rather than a cohesive team unit. Um, I think Martinez has done a decent job there. You know, it's perhaps less individualised than it was after, under Fernando Santos. But, you know, that they've got so much ability. But again, is it does it gel as a team? I don't think it's quite there yet. But th- those would be my... my I, I agree with, 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 with what you said. You know, those four, I think, will be the semi-finalists. But I think Croatia and maybe Turkey... I've got an outside chance if if one of those teams potentially slip up and don't and don't show what they've got. But mate, last question: can 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 we do it? Do you think like legitimately? Do you think England will do it? Nah, I don't. No, nah. no, nah. nah, I just don't. I just like we say. I think we've we've had a good chat to be fair, and I, and I think it's it's just pretty fair, really. It's it's we we commented on really what we've seen and and. You know, it's just got to be, this has got to be the tournament, hasn't it? You know, we've got to start off well. We've got to do well in the group, get momentum, grow into the tournament. And hopefully, you know, we can raise our level when we need to. But there's a lot, there's a lot of question marks. And I, and I don't think, you know, even the most positive England fan would say, we, I don't know, to say we could win it, I don't know. But uh, that, that would be based on vibes, wouldn't it, really? It's not based on what you've seen. So uh, I'd say no. What, what are you saying? Mate, I, I, I can't see it. I honestly can't. I, I'd love to be wrong. Of course, we both love to be wrong. I think a lot of England fans would love to be wrong. But based on what we've just been discussing, based on what we've seen in previous tournaments, what we've seen in a build-up to this one, the evidence just isn't there that we can deliver when it matters. And there's nothing to suggest this time will be any different. So I think ultimately we'll come up short again, whether that's a final or a semi-final uh, remains to be seen. But I just don't think we've got it in us to get over the line. So on that positive note, um, we'll, um, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll round this one out here. Mate, thanks so much for your time. As always, it's greatly appreciated. Um, the people should know where to find you, but if they don't, uh, let them know. Yeah, mate, up the Villa podcast on YouTube. Um, so yeah, cheers, everyone. Yeah, mate, Arla, guys, make sure you go and subscribe there. Loads of great content over there. Um, it'll be tagged in the title, so go and show Luke and the guys some love. Uh, Guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Smash the like, subscribe if you're new around here. And as always, leave your thoughts in the comments below.